if it was an opposition leader who was in power, who was going through a corruption and bribery trial, I don't think you'd have the same view. I think, you would exactly say, the same. I think you'd say there's a clear conflict no, of interest here. I'd, I'd say no, there isn't, because the trial or my legal proceedings are completely unaffected by the, this reform. So the Attorney General, I mean, if, if the statement is that you've broken the law, you're saying, as Prime Minister of Israel, the Attorney General's wrong about the law. Well, of course I'm saying it. I said it openly, and uh, well, hmm. it's not a question. We have a disagreement on that. In fact, that's going to be brought up uh, uh, in court proceedings. Uh, I think it's wrong. I think I, as Prime Minister of Israel, have a responsibility to see if I can somehow bring a conclusion to this uh, impasse, somehow bring a, a resolution so we have responsible judicial democratic reform and at the same time keep the country together. Who's going to do that if not the Prime Minister? Yeah, but your, your point is that the judiciary has got too much power. Yeah. Uh, but what you want to do, and this is again from your critics, and there are a lot of them, and I, again to repeat, they're not just people on the opposition. This is, you know, the voices across the, across the divide here on this. They say what you're pushing for is a form of autocratic rule, where the one remaining check and balance on your power as prime minister is just evaporated. And you ultimately can then determine judge selection. You can determine what laws you pass or don't pass. You become the overriding autocratic leader as they have in many countries where there are genuine autocracies of the kind that you talked about in 2012 now, in that speech. You keep repeating these, uh, these uh, shibboleths and these, uh, these absurdities. Uh, I made Israel the most liberal country, uh, um, among the most liberal countries on the planet. I liberalized its uh, economy, turned it from a straight uh, jacketed uh, socialist economy to a free market economy uh, that benefited the entire people. I uh, brought in uh, investments into the Arab sector more than all the previous governments combined. I, uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, the leader of the gay cell in the Likud, my party, I nominated to be the Speaker of the Knesset, the third uh, highest position in the country. And he was elected not because he's gay, he was elected because he's very good. Uh, but that's the liberal position that I've always espoused and espouse now. To try to paint me as some uh, third world autocrat is ridiculous. I believe in the balance. I'm a classic Democrat with a small d. I don't want to get into trouble with my American friends. But I'm, a, I'm a, a, a classic believer in the balance between the three branches of government. That's what ensures democracy. And it's been thrown off balance in Israel. We have to bring it back. It will not give any power. I do not select. What happens you know, when the I do not select the judges. In fact, they'll be selected by... Uh, by a, a composite committee. It's not important right now, but the majorities, minorities, they all have their place in there. So this is complete falsehood. But it's what are the concessions you're going to make from the current bill to appease those who say what you're doing is taking it from one extreme pendulum in your the, eyes the most, to another? The most, important thing, the most important thing is indeed to restrain the power of the parliament to uh, strike down any decisions that the Supreme Court makes. I think the Supreme Court deserves its place under the sun, its powers, but it just has to be, uh, there are no checks and balances right now in Supreme Court power. So you want to get some checks and balances on that, but you don't want to eliminate checks and balances on the uh, on But the you parliament. want to stop the Supreme Court from interfering in any... No, 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 no. It's, it's called uh, against basic laws, which form uh, the constitutional framework, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, you don't have a not, constitution, do you? No, well, the, the Supreme Court argues that we do already. Mm. The, uh, the, founder, the uh, Supreme, former Supreme Court president said that the basic laws that have been enacted form a constitutional framework. So that those, uh, in any case, those laws, in my opinion, have to be protected. Uh, the Supreme Court can't challenge them, but it can challenge other laws. And the question is, what is the majority that is required in the Supreme Court to strike down a law? That's, I, I won't get into the, the right. weeds of What they're going to do, surely, the Supreme Court, they will try and strike down this. So what do you do as the Prime Minister that wants to do this if the Supreme Court exercises what it believes to be its right to strike down your bill? Well, I think that there's a, it's never happened before that the Supreme Court strikes down basic law. This is a basic law. And I don't think they're about to do it. And I, I hope Really? They They've never had such a direct attack on their authority. It's not, well, then the question is, should they be able to, uh, to, to judge that? To, to, you know, that's a question. Well, it seems that the people of Israel who are protesting every week and all these eminent people who are commenting about this, they prefer the current situation to one where the power moves to the prime well, minister. Well, it, it, it doesn't move to the prime minister. It's got nothing to do with it. The prime minister gets no To power. politicians. Yeah. To, well, then you have to ask yourself, 
If that were the case, I don't see any democracy that has such extreme powers of the Supreme Court as in Israel. There's no such democracy. So are they not democracies? Are they dictatorships? Of course not. They're perfect. When you are trying to take some power away from any branch of government, and in this case from the judiciary, they don't want to take it away. Right now you have a situation where 15 unelected uh, members of the Supreme Court effectively govern Israel. They can decide things that affect our military, our economy, our foreign relations, our battle with terrorism. Is that right? Is that democratic? No, it's not democratic. You want to correct it. Israel is democratic in the sense that you vote for a government, but when you vote for a government, you want that government to govern. Right now, the powers of that government to govern are severely restricted by a Supreme Court that has more powers than any other, in any other democracy on earth. You don't say that those other democracies are somehow tainted, are somehow not democratic, because they've uh, they have a better balance of power. And trying to balance it is difficult, I grant you that. You can see how difficult it is. Right. I don't deny it. And I understand the concerns of those who are generally, generally worried about the, the future of Israel, but so am I. And I would not let Israel become less democratic. I want it to be more democratic. You've always been a politician, it strikes me, who's got an instinct for what the people are thinking. You must be aware the scale of this is like nothing you've ever had to deal with in any of your terms of office, any Israeli prime minister. Mm -hmm. you, this is unprecedented for you. And there comes a point when if you're just going to keep pushing up against this gigantic, ever-growing hill of opposition, including you know, members of your own government who said you should, you should stop this and negotiate, what is your response to that? Well, you know, I was the first one to call for negotiations, even, even though I was in a curious position, because they told me you can't deal with the, the actual uh, workings of the bill. So I didn't. I actually didn't. But I did call on the opposition to join the coalition, the government, to discuss uh, reaching some kind of compromise. And I've called for three months, and they haven't come. So you ask yourself, and when they say, let's halt it, I say, well, you just wasted three months. Why didn't you come in and talk?